At the end of my top five fully automatic Nerf machine gun video, I found something fully automatic and machine gunny. I'll give you a clue. It was rivaly. It was flywheely. It looked a bit like a fully automatic Zeus with a bottle on the top. Bibbidi bobbidi boom! Oh look, it's a Nerf rival nemesis. MXVII 10K to be precise. Now here's the question I want to answer in this review. Nerf rival nemesis, MXVII 10K, game changing primary. This blaster has the potential to rock the fully automatic Nerf machine gun world. Of all the overpowered Nerf guns, this could take the proverbial digestive biscuit. Yes, that's the thing. And if you've never had a digestive biscuit, by the way, you're missing out. They're great for dunking, it's also on the packet. Now for us biscuits are sweet, but I heard you guys in the States have like biscuits and gravy. What's that all about? From the box we learned that it's hopper fed, it's like a giant Nerf paintball gun. 100 balls sounds pretty impressive. Ultimate accuracy. Are you experiencing the intensity? Apparently you can't play with this unless you're over 14 years old. I think it'd have enforced this. They got some kind of Nerf police out there. Hasbro is watching you. We see everything. Also available, the Nerf Rival Artemis, the flashlight grip, the red dot sight, and the face mask. Compatible with Nerf Rival rechargeable battery pack. It's got a trigger lock too. Easy load hopper, tactical rail, rail tactique. Hopper fed, fully motorized, and it's got velocity. This guy knows how to use his rival nemesis properly. <laughs> to be fair, I think the red team's gonna lose because this guy's just kind of... How does it work? And one member of his team, I'm doing parkour! Idiot, don't diss my parkour. Just a quick note, this is the rival Artemis box and here's the blue team kind of doing what they're meant to be doing apart from this guy who's running away. And once again on the red team, I'm doing parkour! And again, blue team kind of shooting sensibly on the Zeus box, whereas the red team, this guy's taking a shot and this guy, what's he even aiming at? I mean, the team's down there! Why would anyone want to be on the red team with- Shut up, I'm jumping! Although having said that, this red guy in the Artemis box is being all sensible and this guy's like, no. Maybe they kicked him off the blue team. Anyway, I digress. Doopy doopy doopa, the singing helps guys. Da -ba -da. Let's open it up. And there we have the rival nemesis. It's big. There is a folding front sight, which doubles as a very small bayonet, as Coop pointed out. To quote the man himself, just the tip, just the tip, whoop, whoop, whoop. Thankfully, the tactical rail allows us to fit a more effective Nerf bayonet, or any other sensible attachments you might feel like adding. Trippy disco like goodness. It's the only attachment rail on the blaster. Try to make the most of it. Made for the nemesis. There's a combos video to be made there. The clear recon light actually looks pretty darn cool on this, to be fair. Red light goes with the rest of the blaster. Sling attachment points here, 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 and there. Actually, to be fair, I think it looks less like a bayonet and more like a horn. Maybe we've got another friend for the Mastodon here. Safety on, safety off. Rev trigger, pew pew trigger. Speed holes, large adult size handle. Popper door opens, popper door closes. The rear sight kind of thing opens up and the hopper comes out quite easily. And we get a good look at some of the internals. For example, the agitator, which turns to flick the balls around to make them fall into this little bit down here. The belt, which draws the balls down into the flywheels, which pop them out. This little switch here corresponds to that switch there. Unless that little switch down there is pressed, the blaster won't rev or fire. When you close the hopper door, that little didgery pops out, pressing that button, meaning that the blaster can fire. Opening up the blaster's battery tray requires a Phillips crosshead screwdriver. Push the battery door this way, off it comes, and out slides the tray. Six D-sized batteries go in there. The contacts on the battery tray correspond to the contacts at the bottom of the battery compartment. Hopper goes back in, high impact rival rounds go in there. And with the door closed, we're ready to fire. believe that that's the second time that's happened look at that look can you see that that went right in there absolutely fantastic let's keep firing okay it seems that the balls aren't feeding properly for whatever reason that's that's absolutely incredible. This is not even a jump to jump video editing trick, which I'm so good at. 
Isn't that amazing? I'm sorry, but I'm ever so slightly stunned by how incredible this is. I've just been firing this kind of at the deploy, and you can see right here that these have just been ending up in there. Now, not all of them have, but that is absolutely incredible. What are the chances? So, that's how the thing worked. This is a tremendously fun blaster, don't get me wrong, but you're gonna spend absolutely ages picking these up off the floor. Now, I'm gonna be quite frank, one thing I really love about this blaster is the way it reloads. And Coop's review Nerf Rival Nemesis MXV1110K unboxing review and firing demo video is a superb illustration of the speed at which you can reload this thing. A couple of videos ago I showed how Mr. Crane was reloading directly from paintball storage tubes into his full auto Nemesis blaster, and that was working really well. One thing that's worth mentioning is this is a gravity fed hopper, so if you turn it upside down and fire it, it doesn't fire. Something to think about if you're this guy. Now the Nerf Rival Nemesis is fun, but I wonder if there's some way that we could make it more exciting. I got these adapters off eBay and whilst they're all right, I did have to chop off the ends because otherwise they just weren't working. We're gonna start off with two IMRs and four dummy batteries. Nominal current generated by 60 size batteries is gonna be round about nine-ish volts. Two IMRs is only 7.4 volts. So we're just gonna see how this goes. <laughs> we have notably um, quite a significant increase in performance. Instantly I can tell that we're hitting a little bit harder, which is absolutely fantastic. I think it might be time to move to three. Okay, and we're now going to be firing this with three IMRs. And it's really starting to scream. Now this is kind of reminiscent of the performance I saw last time at Grim Up Nerf from Mr. Crane's Blast. <laughs> oh, that is absolutely incredible. Now that absolutely 100% brings a smile to your face when you do it. Now, <laughs> three IMRs, 11.1 um, nominal voltage, absolutely incredible. Now, if you're a proper Nerf modder, what you'll want to do is rewire this and then get a 3S LiPo in it. Um, Mr. Crane also says that 2S LiPos work just fine in these. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely fantastic. And I'm not even making this up. If I just approach here, you can see the number of rival balls that have just nestled in there where I was aiming. That is incredible. Look at them, there's actually quite a few in there. You can't really tell because of the shadow and my dodgy camera, but that's yeah, even worse. I don't usually go for fully automatic Nerf blasters, but the Nerf rival Nemesis? This may change that for me. In terms of full auto Nerf machine guns, this may well be the blaster which converts me to more ammo spewing ways. Even though it's really expensive. It's gonna retail for 130 quid when it eventually comes out here in UK. Does that make it the most expensive Nerf blaster ever? Even if it's not, it must be close. But honestly, I think the only way to truly assess a Nerf blaster is to actually take it out and Nerf with it in real life. Thankfully, it's Grim Up Nerf Day. Having 
having used this blaster and grip up nerf today, I can honestly say it is tremendously overpowered. I felt bad for using it. There was another rival nemesis at Grim Up Nerf today as well, which was rewired and running off 3S LiPo. But even just on three IMRs, this thing was smashing everything. Not only was it flinging spherical foam quite a long way, but it just keeps on doing it rapidly. And if you decided there was a particular group of nerfers who were on a part of the field where you didn't want them to be, you just open up with them on this and they instantly have to retreat. And it is worth mentioning today that several of the attendees at Grim Up Nerf had rival blasters. If Grim Up Nerf is anything to go by, then rival is certainly gaining traction in the UK nerf scene. If you go to Bristol Blast or any of the other nerf events around the UK, then, you know, please comment on how true you think that is. Do you need a nerf rival nemesis? The £130 price point you know, have a really good think about that because like I said, the Nerf Rival Artemis is also an incredibly capable blaster and a souped up Rapid Strike is also perfectly competent if you like a full auto blaster. As with all products in a couple of years time, the prices will drop and at that point I think we're going to see blasters like this replacing things like the Rapid Strike. Because of the number of rival blasters on the field today, it was actually quite easy to find balls to top up with, which was one of my main concerns with this type of blaster. Rapid firing Nerf blasters have been at Nerf Wars for quite a long time, so it's nothing new in terms of that. But a rapid firing blaster with this kind of capacity that doesn't have to reload until after 100 rounds, now that's impressive. There's nothing stopping you from putting four or five Havoc Fire belts together. Kind of difficult to keep on reloading them as you're playing. One possible way to approach reloading this is to use tubes and kind of reload, you know, up to 100 at one time, all in one go. In a discussion earlier though, it was pointed out that for someone like me who enjoys front loading and top loading, maybe simply having a pouch full of rival balls on my person and then grabbing them and dropping them in manually might be better than using tubes. In order to get the most out of this blaster you still need to kind of think about what you're doing. Because it is also possible even though you've got a massive capacity to get overconfident in the capacity's ability to keep up with your firing and before you know it you empty the hopper altogether and you're having to retreat to top off a little bit. I would say that's the one disadvantage this blaster has. Bearing in mind the advantages it gives you in terms of rate of fire and capacity the size isn't an issue. Now I also use the Nerf Rival Artemis a lot today because I wanted to kind of share the love of the Nemesis and let lots of other people try it out too. And I think that in the same way that I used to like my Raven for general nerfing, but then my, having my Rapid Pistol for specialist corridor clearing and pinning people down, I think these two might go quite well together. The Artemis in and of itself is a very capable blaster and I loved using it today. But the Nemesis for occasional pinning, corridor clearing and general forcing other nerfers to go where you want them to go, the rival nemesis has got it owned. There have been discussions on nerf forums about how overpowered this blaster is and about how maybe in some, for some game types it might have to be banned. I would say banning it's maybe a bit of an overreaction because I mean like you do get some other quite overpowered blasts like if you get a really good rapid strike or something that can also change the tide of a game. It just means you've got to pick and choose the teams a little bit more carefully. It does have the disadvantages of a fully automatic blaster in that it runs through ammo quite quickly and there's a slight rev up delay which you don't have with something like, for example, the Rival Artemis. I think for competitive nerfing, the Rival Revolution started, and honestly, I see big things happening with this. So my conclusion is that this is a really exciting new addition to the Nerf Arsenal. And it'd be interesting to see what happens as Rival Blasts in general become more prolific, but also as more people start adopting Nemesi as opposed to Rapid Strikes. What's in the stock? We're gonna be needing more of these.